Hi yogis, I'm Jenny Guzambe of Jenny GB Yoga. Welcome to your full sequence practice on the upper back and shoulders. To begin our practice, let's actually come into a seated position, either crossed at the legs like I am in Sukhasana. Feel free to even sit on your shins if it's too much at your knees. You can also take a block, a prop, whether it be a bolster, and if you don't have a block at home, you can always take a, a few maybe hardcover books to stack them, and maybe sitting upon the block so it allows you to kind of elevate the pelvis a little bit and letting the knees drop down so that the femur bones are kind of jammed right into the hips. You know, just simply cross maybe mid-shin or mid-ankle ankles and feel free to even reach around get some skin away from the glutes so you're rooted firmly against your sit bones and then just let your hands rest upon your thighs for just a moment here because I'm going to show you what we're going to practice I'm going to start with a few rounds of what's called Kalabhati breathing um, Kalabhati breathing is um, more often translated as a skull shining breath uh, Kapala meaning skull and Bhati meaning light so this breath kind of is um, kind of turns energy from our lower chakras to bring energy upward towards our brain to actually create a little bit more of a clearing of our mind. It's very invigorating, very rejuvenating. It's an energizing practice that actually kind of brings a lot of heat to the body and um, a little bit more space within our thoughts. So along with that too, we're gonna add um, what's called Merodanda Mudra. And it's simply a uh, thumbs up in your hands. Just simply this, right? Thumbs up. And um, adding this particular mudra adds some calming and centering to our body along with this kalapati breathing. So going back to kalapati breathing, if you've never done it before, it's really easy. I mean, you don't really have to think so much about it, but it's kind of like you're, you're churning your breath, right? And it's quick exhales out of the nose, and you'll instantly just automatically, really, um, inhale without even thinking about it. So I'll just show you right now. You'll inhale through the nose and quick exhales out of the nose. Like you're trying to clear something out of your nose, right? Maybe something might come out, so feel free to keep a tissue nearby. So we're gonna do 20 rounds of that Kapalabhati breathing, along with our mudra, with our arms over our head, the thumbs up, right? As we do our 20 rounds, after that round, we'll lock at the thumbs, tucking the chin in and back in Jalandhara Bandha. So it's not dropping the head down, it's actually dropping the, drawing the chin back towards our throat center. So it allows a lot, a little bit more of that space into the back of our neck. So as we retain that breath with our locked thumbs, Jalandhara Bandha, it's kind of containing all that fire, all that heat in these lower chakras, kind of pausing at that, that chin bandha, right, at the throat center. And then when release, allowing that light to move up, that kundalini, kundalini energy all the way up towards our sahasa chakra. So then when we release, we'll let the arms slowly descend downward as if we're kind of drawing out this beautiful arc or sphere around our body. Feel free to even close the eyes down and kind of visualize this brilliant white light just surrounding your full torso. We'll pause, maybe it's letting the fingers gently spread out wide, really soft into the hands, just reflecting on what you might feel, your breath, and then we'll do that again for three total rounds, okay? And I'll just simply cue you through it so you can watch as you're doing this video together, or if you'd like, close your eyes and just listen to my cues. All right, so let's sit nice and tall in our seat. Again, if you're on a prop or not, hands will rest along your thighs for just a moment as we feel nice and upright through our torso. Collarbones wide as if they're smiling. You'll notice how your shoulder blades will set just kind of firmly on your back, allowing a lot of space into your upper body. And from here, draw your low belly in and up with a kind of a lift of the front room of the pelvis. So now your pelvic bowl is pretty neutral. From that firm grounding of our lower half of the body, let your upper body feel lifted and expansive, three-dimensionally, from front body to back body and our side bodies. Just take a moment here, just let your eyes close down and just allow yourself just to settle onto your space, preparing your mind, your body, your spirit for your practice. So let's begin our rounds of Kalabhati breathing. Again, you'll create that Merudanda Bumudra in your thumbs, or rather your thumbs up. Use your inhale to circle the arms up overhead. A soft bend in your elbows as if you're creating a circle around the head, shoulders away from the ears. Together, let's take a deep inhale through the nose, and then begin. One, two, three, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Hold the breath, lock your thumbs, tuck your chin in and back for another 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, release your thumbs and very slowly let the arms descend downward towards the mat again, visualizing this brilliant white light just all around your torso. Once your hands are just outside your hips, let your fingers kind of spread out wide, really soft within the palms and the fingers and take a moment just to notice your breath, notice any energetic shift. And then once again, create that thumbs up in your hands. Inhale, extend the arms up overhead. A soft bend in the elbows as you create a circle around the head, shoulders away from the ears. Take an inhale to begin. And then quick exhales out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Hold the breath. Lock your thumbs. Jalandara Bandha. Tuck your chin in and back and hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly release your thumbs as you exhale, letting the arms gently descend downward again, visualizing like you're drawing out this brilliant arc around your body. Fill up with all this brilliant white light around you. Once your hands are down alongside, maybe open up the palms softly. Again, take a moment, just notice. Let's do our last round. Once again, create that thumbs up in your palms. As you inhale, circle the arms up overhead, soft in the elbows, shoulders away from the ears. Take an inhale to prepare. And then exhale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Lock your thumbs, tuck your chin in and back. Hold the breath for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, slowly in the arms. Just encircle your whole body. Letting the fingers slowly open up. And keeping the eyes closed or closing them now as you bring your hands together right at your heart and Anjali Mudra, taking a moment here to set your sankalpa, your intention for your practice today. Whatever will keep you connected, dedication. Go ahead and lift the head, lift the chin, open up your eyes. And from here, go ahead and just bring both arms just outside the hips once again. Palms slightly turned forward. On your next inhale, circle the arms up overhead. Rotate the pinkies inward just slightly so you see the eyes of your elbows facing your ears. Shoulders down and away from the ears. We'll add a side stretch here. So lower your right hand down, walk your fingertips out, and then exhale, side stretch up and over towards your right. Now, once you're here, begin to bend just a little bit more into your left elbow. Even notice your left shoulder head likes to kind of jut forward. So roll the inner shoulder to outer shoulder. So your shoulder's away from the ear. Soften, soften a little further away from the ear as you lean a little bit more to your right. And then notice here too, sometimes you can actually lift that sit bone away. So ground your left sit bone down against the mat as you expand and open up into your whole left side waist. And from here, go ahead and bend at the elbow, and we'll place the fingertips right behind our head. And then start to turn your gaze upward, looking towards your left elbow. And kind of even see you can shift both eyes towards the elbow, so you get a little exercise into your eyes. Again, notice that right shoulder head, it wants to kind of jut forward again. So roll the shoulder back, keeping collarbones wide. Now from here, keep your hand behind your head, look downward towards your knee, and as you exhale, we'll point that left elbow down to the knee. No need to touch it. Instead, I want you to start to feel how your shoulder blades spread apart, opening a lot of space into your upper back. Gavin, okay, now take your gaze to look past your right shoulder towards the back of your space. On your next inhale, go ahead and open up the chest back. Again, maybe gazing towards the elbow. 
and then exhaling, rounding in through the spine, shoulder blades apart as the elbow moves to the knee, maybe gazing back. And then you'll just continue this, just moving along with your own breath. Try not to rush it, so it gives you that opportunity to kind of feel what's going on in through your back and in through your shoulders today. Now the next time you peel that chest open, go ahead and extend that left arm straight. And in fact, take the arm a little further back. So you open up even more into your chest. Then flex at your palm. Go ahead and turn the hand. So now your thumb is pointing back, your fingertips pointing down, and you feel like you're kind of pushing out through the heel of the hand. From here, we're gonna let the head simply drop downward towards our right shoulder. So you feel a nice little stretch into the side of your neck. Now from here, we're gonna keep the hand, the arm exactly the same, and just gonna externally rotate at the shoulder joint. So we're gonna to rotate towards the right, so towards the back of your mat. And you'll start the circle small, so if you're kinda of drawing out a pea-sized circle, and then eventually growing it into a grapefruit-sized circle. Until maybe into a basketball-sized circle. And if your shoulder allows, maybe in the size of a big exercise ball circle. Beautiful. Go ahead and pause. Keeping your palm flexed, go ahead and now turn the fingertips up. So now your thumb is facing forward. And this time we'll internally rotate at that shoulder. So again, starting small, that pea-sized circle. And eventually to the grapefruit-sized circle. Basketball size. And then maybe just a little bit bigger, just like an exercise ball size. Nice. And go ahead and pause. Go ahead and reach that arm up, palm facing into the midline. Push against your right hand so you can straighten out through the spine. And now we'll take the left hand just outside of the right leg. Plant your right hand right behind your hips. Use your inhale to lift up and lengthen. And as you exhale, let's add our twist to your rotating from the bottom ribs all the way up towards the chest. And even turn your head towards your back shoulders. So your neck is also a part of the spine. So you wanna feel that rotation there as well. Now go ahead and just keep the twist, the hand on the leg, turn your head forward towards your left shoulder head and then tuck the chin in and downward. So if you're trying to look down towards the shoulder, towards your armpit, and then feel your back arms. So you can slide your right shoulder blade down the back so you feel just a little bit more stretch into the back of your neck. Now use your inhale to lift the head to center. Take your right arm and reach it up towards the sky as you inhale. As you exhale, cross at your elbows and we'll slide both hands in front of our kneecaps. Go ahead and grab the knees. And then as you exhale, go ahead and shift your weight back. So you're pressing down through the outside edges of your feet. Create a little tuck of your tailbone here as you pull the belly in. Feel weighted in through the legs. You're starting to kind of hold them up. And you'll notice here how your shoulder blades will spread wide and apart as you're breathing out some space into your upper back. You can always tuck your head in, the chin a little closer towards your throat center. And go ahead and just simply lift the head to look center. Go ahead and keep those elbows still crossed as you now lower the legs. Come back onto the sit bones in your seat. And then go ahead and reach around. Now if you're tight in the shoulders, you can always just go ahead and reach back to find your shoulder blades like you're giving yourself a big hug. If it's okay, then you'll go ahead and now find eagle in your arms. Either way, whether you're kind of giving yourself a hug or you've got these eagled arms, lift the elbow creases just a little bit higher so you see them almost in line with the tops of your shoulders. Shoulders down and away from your ears, neck nice and free through all four sides. And now just gently nudge your arm bones forward. So you're pushing out through your outer wrists and through your outer elbows, still feeling that broadening in your upper back, shoulder blades apart. Keeping your arm variation, go ahead and now tuck your elbows downward toward your chest. And if you got these eagle arms, start to point your fingertips forward. And just kind of depending on what you're feeling today and the flexibility into your arms, you'll start to feel a lot of that stretch moving in through the front of the shoulders. You can always add a little bit more of a stretch into the throat and through the neck. If you drop your head back a little bit, hey, gazing upward, feel free to even open your mouth, stretch out the jaw, stick out your tongue. 
and go ahead and take everything back through center. As you exhale, unravel your arms. Tend your fingertips past your hips where your thumbs are towards your seat and your fingertips back behind you. And then press down against your fingers. Lift your torso up and away from the pelvis as you now find this cow tilt in through your spine, squeezing the shoulder blades in, letting the head gently fall back. And like doing a little counter posture from our eagle wrapped arms. With your next inhale, gaze forward. Keep your hands behind your hips, so now you can just simply lean back and just switch up the cross of your legs. Once you switch up the cross and you're regrounded into your seat, inhale, extend both arms up overhead, palms facing, slight pinky t uh, pinkies turned inward. With your next exhale, we're gonna lower the left hand down, walk the fingertips out, bend at the elbow, finding your side, stretch over towards your left. So that's a howler monkey. I'm filming this in Costa Rica, so hopefully that monkey sounds really close. Hopefully it just kind of stays where it is, unless it wants to practice yoga with me. All right, so again, watch with that left, that shoulder head. It wants to jut forward. Roll inner shoulder, outer shoulder, collarbones nice and wide and open. Go ahead and bend at the elbow. Place the fingertips right behind the head. Just really gentle with the fingertips. Gaze up towards your shoulder, your elbow rather. And as you exhale, you're going to go ahead and curl and round through the spine. So think like a cat's pose. So as your elbow points downward towards your knee, take the opportunity to actually find that rounding in through your upper back. Gaze past your left shoulder. With your next inhale, we'll go ahead and point that elbow back up again. Collarbones nice and wide, gazing upward. Use your next exhale to curl it inward. And again, just a couple more. Don't need to count it. Just again, taking the opportunity as we're kind of finding this stretch into our upper back and shoulders. Good way to just kind of assess what's going on and through these areas to begin. And then the next time we point that elbow up towards the sky and the chest is open, go ahead and extend your right arm straight, extend the arm a little further back, and again, keeping the collarbones wide, flex at your palm, and then go ahead and turn the hands so now the fingertips point downward, the thumb towards the back of the room. Keep your elbows straight as you can as you now lower your head so that your left ear is towards your left shoulder. Feel that stretch into the neck. And then let's create those external rotations. So you're going to circle the arm towards the back of the room, towards the back of your space. Again, starting small with the circles. Again, imagine a pea-sized circle. And eventually growing it just a little bit more to that grapefruit size. Basketball size. And again, if you have that mobility in your shoulders, you can actually create big, bigger circles. And then after that, we'll pause, change the direction of the hand so the fingertips point upward, still pushing out through the heels of the hand, the elbow's still straight, and then we'll internally rotate from the shoulder circle, shoulder socket. Again, starting small with the circles, and again, just kind of slowly growing the size of the circles, kind of observing how at our shoulder is a ball and socket joint, so you have this ability to move the arm bone in this manner. And You'll notice too, if you kind of tighten the shoulders, you'll maybe hear or even feel a little locking, all right? So seeing perfectly normal if that happens to you. Right? Just always just be mindful of that, notice some movements, just protecting what you need to protect. All right, after you've done that, go ahead and pause. Inhale, extend the arm up, palm facing towards the midline. Push against your left palm to help you straighten out through the spine. And as you exhale, take that right hand to the outside of your left knee and thigh. Right hand anchors right behind your hips. Inhale for length. And as you exhale, turn and open, gazing past your shoulder. Again, you want to find that rotation into the cervical, into the neck. Go ahead and now keep that twist. Turn your chin forward towards your right shoulder head and then tuck your chin in and downward towards your throat center. Fix the gaze down as well. But feel your back arm. Again, so you can slide that left shoulder blade down the back so it moves away from the back of the skull so you find that space in the back of your neck. Use your next breath in to lift the head to center. 
keep your hand on the leg, we'll take the back arm, your right arm, left arm rather, inhale, extend it up. And as you exhale, start to cross at your elbows, and then both hands will slide to find the front of our kneecaps. Once you've got a good grip of your knees, go ahead and start to tip your weight back, so you're rolling past your sit bones, right? So you're more on the tailbone, the tuck of the tail, a belly pulled in. You're holding on to your legs here, so you now feel that stretching through your upper back. So the more you feel like your knees are pushing into your palms, you feel how those shoulder blades move apart. And just breathe into that space you're creating there. Go ahead and look forward, keep the elbows crossed as you have them, we'll lower the legs back down, lift the arm bones up through center, and then again, have that opportunity to reach around, give yourself that big hug, or if it's okay to go right into eagle, go ahead and find Garundasana arms, eagle. Lifting the elbow creases with the tops of the shoulders, shoulders down and away from the ears as you keep all four sides of your neck nice and open. And then nudge your arm bones forward just a little bit. Notice how as you push your elbows, your outer wrists towards the front of the room, towards the front of your space, you'll feel how your back body is really expansive. So you can actually draw your low belly in and, in, in and up a little bit, firmly root down against your sit bones. Keep the arms exactly the same, and then tuck your elbows downward towards your chest as you start to point your fingertips forward. Different side, different sensation. Just can notice a little bit further, a little bit more from me on this side. Either stay here with your head centered and neutral, or lift your head up and back, letting the head gently fall back, and opening up a lot of space through the front of the shoulders, in through your throat. Again, you have the opportunity to open your mouth, stick the tongue out, good stretch for the jaw, maybe even say, ah. So, all right, take it all back to center as you inhale. Exhale, slowly release your arms. Once again, tend your fingertips past the hips. Use your next inhale to cow tilt the spine, puff the chest to the sky as you squeeze the blades to the midline, again, letting the head fall back. And then inhale, look forward, and then exhale to release. Let's meet in a standing forward fold at the very top of your space. So meeting at the very top of our space in a standing forward fold, separate your feet about hip width distance apart. And pretty easy way to figure that out if you take your fists on the thumb sides and kind of rest them right inside the inner feet, it'll help determine a little bit more of that hip width distance. You can also look downward and just kind of line up your middle toes along with your shin bones, the middle of the knees to your thigh bones, all the way up to your hip points. Once you're set your stance and your, your legs, Soften your knees just a little bit and let your upper body just simply drape over your legs. Now, if you're struggling to reach for the floor and you have really tight hamstrings, the bend in the knees is really encouraged here so that you're not overstraining the back chain of the legs. You can always place a block right in front of you and adjust the height of the block just so that you can actually come a little bit more comfortably into your forward fold. Now, once you're in your fold, Again, let your upper body just simply drape. The head is heavy, your jaw is relaxed. There's that bend in both knees so we can aim our chest up against our upper thighs a bit more. Then from here, we're gonna go ahead and walk both hands just outside of the right foot. And as you start to do so, bend your right knee and so you can straighten your left leg out just a little bit. Let your head and neck relax as if you're trying to press your nose towards your right outer knee. You can always walk your left fingertips out diagonally to the right as you clip your left hip crease back. Just see if that gives you a little bit more opening in through the left side of your body. Go ahead and walk your left hand back in and then we'll walk it all the way over to the left. Again, if you're using the block, take it with you. We'll bend the left knee, straighten your right leg out. Again, let your head and neck relax. Go ahead and reach that right arm out diagonally if that felt good for you. Extending and lengthening away from your right hip crease kind of draws back away from your fingertips. And then go ahead and walk both hands back into the center. Take this moment here just again, staying in the fold, but reach for opposite elbows here, like you're creating a little box around your head. So, so you can line your biceps with your ears, heavy through the arm bones, soft within your face. And as you can see, I'm just kind of gently swaying side to side. And it feels nice and through the low back. You can always play with the weight distribution against your feet. You can shift your weight forward to the metatarsals, the ball mounts of your feet, and then back towards the heels, and maybe even from side to side. 
from here, go ahead and now release your arms. Let's reverse swan dive up to stand. So press against your feet as you inhale, circle the arms out to the side, up to the sky. Once your arms are overhead, turn the palms to face. In fact, so you can even rotate the pinkies more towards each other so you feel that the upper arms kind of uh, triceps wrap forward and the eyes, the elbows look towards your forehead. From here, go ahead and place your fingertips behind your head, elbows wide out to the side. And as you exhale, we'll side stretch up and over towards your right. You can shift your hips more to the left a little bit so you feel a nice stretch in through your left side. Use your breath in to come through the center. And then exhale, we'll take our side stretch over to the other side. Again, elbows really reaching out wide, hips moving a little bit to the right. With your next inhale, let's reach both arms up overhead. This time, connect your palms. And as you exhale, we'll bend at the elbows and tuck the heel of the hands at the base of your skull. As you do so, I want you to gently lean your head back against your prayer hands and then wrap your triceps forward as you're trying to hug your upper arms against your ears, elbows to the sky as you create this nice, gentle back bend. Again, if it's too much, you can always softly bend at your knees. Make sure your belly's strong here. Go ahead and now inhale, reach both arms back up overhead. With your exhale, fan the arms out to the sides, soft bend in the knees as you come back into your forward fold. Let's come into monkey pose, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. So place your hands against your shins for this first version here. So as your palms push against your shins, the shins against your palms, let that be a way to feel more lengthening of your spine. Let your collarbones widen, the neck is free. Notice where your head is. A lot of times I see a lot of students looking directly forward to the front of the room. So, so you can actually gaze downward so you feel all four sides of your neck nice and open and free. Then shift your weight slightly forward, rocking the pelvis forward rather than taking the weight back towards your heels. Use your next exhale to now forward fold in. Inhale again, look up, lengthen, Ardha Uttanasana, monkey pose. And then exhale, we fold. Go ahead and place your hands flat against your mat and we'll step the right foot back and then your left foot back, coming right into your plank pose. Once you're in your plank posture, so you can align your shoulder heads over your elbow creases, fingers really wide. And I want you to press down against your fingertips Really feel that connection against your mat. And as you're pushing down against your mat, feel your shoulder blades widen, right? So you feel that nice opening into your upper back. Again, the gaze is down, but we're not looking down towards our feet. You wanna feel that the front of the throat is nice and open. From here, let's lower both knees gently to the mat. Lead with your chest, so rock your weight forward and we'll exhale and lower all the way downward towards the mat. Once you arrive there, slide your forearms out in front of you, coming into Sphinx Pose. So you're creating this number 11 with your upper arms, shoulder heads over the elbow creases, fingers still spread out nice and wide. From here, I want you to feel like you're dragging your hands, your elbows back towards your toes as you lift your lower belly off the mat, rib cage off the mat, collarbones wide, neck is nice and free. And then we'll drop the right ear downward towards your right shoulder, but then I'm press down against your left elbow. So you feel a little stretch in through the left side of your neck. With your inhale, lift the head to center, and then we'll switch. Drop the left ear to the left shoulder, press down against your right elbow. Use your inhale to come back through center. Exhale, tuck the chin downward towards the throat center. So now you're looking towards the chest, feeling that nice opening through the back of your neck as you're pushing down firmly against both elbows. Use your inhale to lift the gaze, so look forward. Exhale, lower the chest and slide your hands underneath the heads of the shoulders. From here, go ahead and slide back into a child's pose. Big toes touch, knees a little wide. Extending both arms forward as your hips reach towards your heels. This is a great reminder here that you can always drop down into this pose anytime you need a little bit of rest, if you need a little time to catch your breath. And then from here, let's come to our very first downward facing dog. So go ahead and look forward, lift your hips, curl the toes under. We'll lift the knees and the hips up and back for our downward dog. So once you're here, let's walk out our legs a few times. So bending through one knee, the other knee. You can always take one of the bent knees and angle it over to the sides, shift a little bit through your hips and then do that in the other direction. And then coming back into our downward facing dog, really feel the connection of against your mat. So spread your fingers out really wide, press against your fingertips, applying just a little bit more pressure against the inner hands. So think about your index finger and your thumb and find the bases of them as you root them down against the mat. So you're not shifting all your weight against the pinky sides of your hands. 
As you find that firm connection of your palms, take the eyes, the elbows, and slightly turn them forward, right, to the front of the room or to the front of your space so that your triceps wrap back and your shoulder blades will lie a little bit more flat on the back. Now draw your low belly in and your low ribs in so you can feel just a little bit more extension through your low back. Your legs here. So if you're like me, I've got some pretty open hamstrings and my heels can pretty easily touch the mat, always depending on the day. But if you have tight hamstrings, I encourage you to bend the knees. But then watch that you're not just pooching your chest forward or dumping weight against your low back. So you can, again, draw the low belly in and up. Find that lengthening of the spine. Lift your sit bones high up into the air. And then just really work on letting the heels get heavier so you get that nice stretch in the back of your legs. From here, let's go ahead and inhale. Lift your right leg up in the air. Come into a three-legged downward dog. Now watch when you lift, lift the leg up. Sometimes you just kind of extend. You want to feel like, oh, I've got it as high as I can. But instead, I want you to think about more of alignment here. So keep your hips square. And if you look back, you should see your toes of the right foot turning downward towards the mat, helping to square off your hips. Now with your left heel, again, let that hip get heavy. And then clip your left hip back. Feel that you've got even weight pushing against both palms, lengthening still within your spine, the belly pulled in. Now go ahead and bend at the knee and stack your right hip on top of the left. Again, one of the things that I always see here is that people kind of overextend, right? And there's maybe a little torque in through that bottom, your left heel, and a lot of weight against your left side. So see if you can actually keep the stacking of your hips but keep the squaring of your shoulders, especially since that's the emphasis of our practice today in our upper back and shoulders. After you've maybe moved around into your hip or even stayed static, let's go ahead and now inhale, straighten the leg. Again, square off the hips once again. With your next exhale, shift your weight forward as you pull your right knee into your chest for a core plank. Maybe gazing down to your thumbs or even to your kneecap, but again, pushing against your mat so you feel the rounding of the back. Use your next inhale to extend the right leg back and up. With your next exhale, hug your knee in towards your chest and we'll step forward to the very top. Place your foot a little closer to your right thumb. We're gonna lower the left knee down. Release your toes and pause right here for just a moment. I want you to think about how you can get heavy through your hips and your pelvis, like you're trying to aim it forward towards the front of your space. And then glue the top of your back foot firmly against the mat and then feel like you're trying to drag that left leg forward. So you're getting a nice big stretch that moves into the inner seam of your thigh, right into your psoas. And just kind of observe that. Again, trying to squeeze that right heel to touch your left knee, your left knee to the right heel. From here, let's find half split or the Hanuman. So go ahead and straighten your front leg out. Once you're here, keep your hips stacked over your left knee. You're on the heel of your right foot. There's a flex at that ankle, right? So the toes will point upward as you're really rooting down against the heel. Again, if you have those tight hamstrings, you can do the same pose with a little bend in your knees. Hands on blocks are encouraged here too, especially if you're kind of hanging out. Make sure you can get some grounding into your palms. Once you're here, you have the option to either stay upright, reaching your chest forward, or maybe go a little bit deeper into the pose, aiming your sternum towards your shin. And again, just kind of using these first few asanas or postures just to warm up through our body. Now use your next inhale to look forward and lengthen your spine out once again. Place your right hand onto the mat underneath your shoulder. You can always take a block and place your hand on a block for a little bit more height and support. You'll take your left hand and cup it over the ball mount of your right foot. If you cannot reach, just simply bend at that knee. Whether your knee is straight or bent, hold the ball mount of the foot and now push it forward against your palm. And as you're pushing it against your palm, at the same time, Pull the arm bone back, and you should feel this nice, incredible stretch that moves in through the left side of your back all the way towards the upper back. And then breathe here. I like to let my head just simply relax, so I just feel that stretch into the whole back side of my body. Go ahead and now release your left hand, set the block off to the side, bend into your front knee, so now we come into a runner's lunge. So pick up your back knee off the ground, line up your left heel over the left ball mount of your foot. Left hand stays down on the ground, inhale, let's find a revolve lunge. Reach your right arm upward into the air, stacking your shoulders, stacking your wrists. Then take your right arm and then just reach it towards, a, towards your back foot, right? So your arm is along with your right side waist. You're still within this little rotation, this gentle twist. But now I want you to just drop your head so your left ear is aiming towards your left fingertips as you're really energetically reaching out through your right arm. So you feel that stretch in through your neck once again and through the tops of the shoulders. 
Use your next inhale, circle the arm up and overhead. We'll place the hand on the inside of your right foot. So now we can exhale and travel to the left. Once you're in this wide-legged stance, pivot the toes in slightly, kick the heels out just a little bit. Let's walk the left arm forward onto the wood floor, tense your fingertips. Then take your right arm and thread it underneath to reach for your left calf, maybe down to the ankle. And if that's too far, you can just simply place your right hand on the mat just as close as you can towards your foot. Whether you've got your leg or your hand is on the mat, start to bend that right elbow so you can add a little twist here. So you're kind of pushing your hand against the leg or the mat as a way to kind of traction out and get a little bit more of this rotation. Notice your pelvis though, Wanna, it wants to kind of twist with you too. So imagine you've got like a glass of water resting on your lower back at the sacrum. And then so the tendency here is since we're twisting to the left, our hips want to shift and we'll drop that right side of the pelvis. So, so you can actually press that side up to the sky as you're now rotating more from the ribs. We'll take another breath. And then exhale, release that. Inhale, look up, get length. With your exhale, let's pivot forward to the very top of the mat. Inhale, step forward, forward fold to the top, still keeping your feet at, feet at hip width distance apart. With your next inhale, circle the arms out and up towards the sky. Once your arms are overhead, this time turn your palms to face forward and lock at your thumbs. With your exhale, we'll side stretch up and over towards the right. Once you're here, bend your right knee and then seek and shift a little bit more of your weight to the left so you can give you a little bit more space on that left side waist. As you inhale, come back through the center and then we'll side stretch up and over towards the left. Again, bending the left knee as you shift your hips to the right to get a little bit more space. Use your next inhale, come back through the center. Exhale, release your arms, interlace your fingers behind your back. Use your next inhale to extend your arms and lift your chest. A little bend in those knees as we go back into our forward fold, chest to the thighs, crown of the head, down or to the ground. Now, once you're here, <clears throat> just depending on how you feel in your upper back and shoulders, again, be very mindful because it's what we're doing a lot today in our practice. Maybe you'll just simply let your hands rest against your low back. Eventually, though, you'll start to let your arms start to reach up and over. And in fact, maybe work on closing the heels of the hands. So you're taking the flexion away from your wrists. And notice how that gives you just a little bit more sensation or stretch into your forearms. From here, let's keep this arm still the same. We'll bend the left knee, right leg will straighten again, but we'll drop the left shoulder towards the knee as we open our chest towards your right, and then aim your knuckles to the left. Then pass through center on an inhale, exhale other way. Bend your right knee, left leg a little straight. Turn your gaze to the left, fists to the right. Come back into center, back into your fourfold. Keep your hands still interlaced and rest your hands against your lower back. Once you're here, let your fingertips release here rather than just letting the arms splay out. It's kind of hard on the shoulders that way, right? As much as we want to release the grip. So if, instead, I want you to bend the elbows a little bit. Then release your fingertips and just simply let the fingertips drip down the back of both legs. With your next inhale, let's find monkey pose, hands to the shins again, or maybe this time fingertips against your mat. With your exhale, forward fold in. Place your palms flat, let's step the feet back. Once again, coming back into your plank posture. Shoulders over the wrists, draw your low belly in. A slight tuck of the tailbone so you're not sticking your butt out, letting your belly pooch down. Right? So you wanna pull it all in and up. At the same time, squeeze everything into the midline. It's really strong core posture, or rather plank posture. From here, this time rock your weight forward towards your big toes. Lead with their chest as you exhale, hug the arms in close towards your outer ribs as we lower back down or to the mat. Once you arrive, release the tops of the feet. From here, take your feet maybe a little mat width distance. I feel like it kind of gives you a little bit more opening through your low back if you have a tight low back. Cobra Bhujangasana. Loop your shoulder heads up, back and down and feel like you're dragging your hands back as you move your belly forward, lifting through the heart, collarbones wide, Again, the neck nice and open and free. Lead with the chest and feel like you're isometrically dragging the hands back as you lower. Try that once again. Feel like you're looping the shoulder heads up, back and down. Hands drag back, chest moves forward and up. Coming into Bhujangasana, Cobra. Lead with the chest as you exhale the side lower. Toes touch, knees wide. Once again, child's pose. Send the hips back to your heels. Let your arms extend forward. Maybe this time turn the hands upward. Putting just a little bit more external rotation. 
and then go ahead and ground the palms come back into a downward facing dog curl the toes lift your knees and lift your hips so set up your hands set up the feet pull the low belly in and up and then we'll try the left side. So inhale, lift your left leg up, three-legged downward dog. Again, notice here that you're not torquing here or shifting more of your weight against your right side or even lifting that leg up crazy up in the air. So you can actually keep it all in alignment. Shoulders are square, hips are square, hip points are looking down. And then from here, now you can stack the left hip on top of the right as you bend it through your knee. Again, notice here if everything wants to turn and twist to look to the left. So you can keep your chest still facing your mat, Press down and forward more against your left palm if you start to feel like your right hand is doing all the work. Use your next inhale. We'll straighten the legs. Square off your hips once again. Exhale. Hug your knee in towards your chest. Curl out and round your spine as you hollow the belly, gazing towards your mat or towards your knee. Inhale, extend your leg back and up, still keeping our hips square. Exhale, let's step that foot forward next to your left thumb. Drop the back knee down, release your toes, stay there with your hands on the mat. You can gaze down and just feel that heavy grounding of your pelvis, right? And at the same time, the top of our right foot is pushing down against the mat as we're trying to drag it forward. Again, we're trying to access a little bit more of the inner leg line sensation. Take another breath. Then shift your hips back. Let's come into half split, Ardha Hanuman. So once you're set here, again, the hips are stacked over the back knee. Notice there are a lot of tendency too as we kind of hike the hip out to the side. So square it off once again. A little bend in the knee is encouraged, but still the action is you're trying to drag that left heel back so you feel the back chain of the leg open up. Stay upright or hold in for a couple moments. Then inhale, look forward. Once again, left hand stays on the mat underneath the shoulder. Maybe place your hand on the block for a little bit more height and support. Cup your right hand over the ball mount of your right foot. Push the ball of the foot forward against your palm as you pull the arm back. And again, as you're doing so, you should really start to find that stretch in your upper back. So there's the both actions here. The foot is pushing, the hand is pulling. One more breath. And then exhale, slowly release that. Go ahead and set the block off to the side. Bend into your front knee. Find your runner's lunge first and then revolve lunge. Right hand stays down on the mat or on a block. Inhale, left arm up in the air as you stack up your shoulders and stack up your wrists. Then once you're here, take your left arm and reach it toward the back of your space and then let your head just simply drop. Right? And then your hand that's on the mat, try not to just kind of dump down against it. Push down against your mat so you feel a little bit more of this lift. And then just pass it through the head. Inhale, extend the arm up and over. Plant the hand to the inside of the foot. Let's walk to the right so you can find that wide-legged stance. Once again, Prasarita Padatanasana. This time, let's walk the right fingertips forward onto the wood floor. Tent the fingers. Thread your left arm through. Again, maybe you're grabbing for your calf or down to the ankle or simply somewhere closer to the foot where your hand is on the mat. Once you're set, start to find that turn and twist. Like you're trying to look up underneath your right armpit, but then reestablish that squaring of your pelvis each time as you're here, right? So you're kind of finding more of that rotation from the ribs all the way up towards the chest. Beautiful. Exhale. We'll release that. Inhale. Look up like that. Exhale. Pivot forward to the very top of your space. Inhale. Step forward. Exhale forward fold uttanasana inhale rise a stand circle the arms out and up maybe see the palms touch and then exhale glide your hands right to your heart samastitihi bring your arms right alongside your body take a moment in your stance into dasana mountain pose and we'll take a few moments here <clears throat> find that grounding before we now add surya namaskar a use your next inhale arms reach up maybe palms touch with your exhale, hinge at your hips, lead with the chest as you forward fold down against your legs. Inhale, look up, lengthen, Ardha Uttanasana. Take your palms flat, whether you step or hop back, plank to Chaturanga Dandasana, leading with the chest. Inhale, this time, upward facing dog. Lift through the chest, widen your collarbones, throat is open. Keep your belly strong as you lift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha, downward facing dog. Once again, feeling the grounding of your palms. 
press against your fingertips. Feel like you're pushing your mat down and forward with your hands. Hips are high, heels are heavy. Take away that lock against your kneecaps and instead really work on strengthening and squeezing at your quads as your hips lift. So you're finding that co-contraction of your hamstrings. Take one more breath here. Then use your inhale, lift the heels, look towards your hands. Exhale, walk, step, or hop forward to the top. Inhale, flat back, lengthen. Exhale, forward, fold in. Inhale, rise, a stand, sweep the arms out and up. Maybe see the palms connect. And then exhale, hands right to your heart. Samas Titihi. Again, inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, forward, fold in. Inhale, lift up, lengthen, gazing towards the wood floor in front of you, rather than forward. Then take your palms flat, send your feet back, Chaturanga Dandasana. With your inhale, find your back bend, squeeze the shoulder blades, widen your collarbones. Exhale, downward facing dog, lift your hips up and back. So you want to feel here how your feet almost feel like they're trying to slide back as your hips are lifted. And again, when the toes are a little lifted, the arches of your feet are active, right? And at that same time with that inner leg line awareness, so you can spin your inner thighs back, like you've got a block in between your thighs and trying to shoot it behind you. And that in turn might help create a little bit more opening in your low back. Let's add one more breath. Then use your next inhale, lift the heels, look where you're going. Exhale, walk, step, or hop forward. Inhale, halfway up, and exhale, forward fold in. Inhale, circle the arms out and up, palms connect. Exhale, hands to the heart, samastitihi. Again, inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, fold, lengthen on the way down, let your gaze come down last. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, find length. Palm slap, walk, step, hop, maybe even hand standing back. Inhale, upward face, forward Vamukha. Exhale, Adho Mukha, downward facing dog. And taking a few moments here, just recognizing the movement of your breath, right? It's a nice, still posture, steady posture for us to really work on the steady movement of our breath that's moving in and out within our nose. Maybe adding that feeling and sound of ujjayi pranayama, right? That little constriction at the back of our throat. All right, empty out your next exhale. Inhale, lift the heels look forward. Exhale, walk step, hop it forward. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, and fold. Rise and stand, reach the arms overhead, palms connect. Exhale, hands right to your heart. Samastitihi. Let's do one more together. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, lengthening on the way downward to the legs. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Palms flat, send your feet back. Chest is lengthening forward. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha, up dog. Feel heavy through the pelvis. Exhale, downward dog. Lift your hips up and back. All right, get a little sweat out of my eye here. And then once you're set again, finding that stance in your down dog, let your head feel free and heavy. Wrap your blades around like you're trying to hollow out your armpits. You feel your shoulder blades lie flat on the upper back. All right, so this time, feel free to even add a couple more Surya Namaskar A, Sun A, if you'd like. Right? Otherwise, once you're set back in your downward dog together, go ahead and look forward towards your hands. Now, we're going to kind of work a little bit more on our upper back coming into a dolphin, but we're going to do it in a way where we're kind of one arm at a time. So lower just your right elbow and forearm down first, then lower your left elbow and forearm down. Then lift your right elbow and forearm up, then lift the left one up. One more time on this side. Lower the right elbow and forearm down, then the left, then lift the right, then lift the left. Now switch. Lower the left, then lower the right, lift the left, then lift the right, lower the left, lower the right, lift the left, lift the right. Beautiful. Once you're set here, go ahead and take another deep breath in and a deep breath out. Then inhale, lift the heels, look to the hands. Exhale, walk, step or hop forward. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, 
fold right in. Connect the big toes, bend deeply into your knees. This time it's Ukatasana, chair, or fierce pose, right? So if you know you have uh, low back issues, it's kind of ease, uh, better if you separate your feet a little bit more hip width distance again, but try not to knock the knees in. So imagine you've got a block in between your legs. You can even use your block as that way to kind of determine that, right? And keep it there as long as you like. Otherwise, we'll bring those big toes together. <coughs> So the weight should be more towards your heels, even maybe slide your knees back a little bit to feel like the knees are directly over your heels. So your shins uh, is perpendicular over the mat as much as you can. Get heavy through the hips, but then pull your low belly in and up. So you really engage through your core. Arms are overhead, palms face, rotating a little bit through those pinkies, shoulders away from the ears. From here, now connect the palms above you. Then it's your elbows, and then once again, we're finding that little back bend. So tuck the heel, hands behind your head. Wrap, wrap your triceps forward as you lift your elbows up, maybe even lifting the gaze up. Keep your belly firmed in and your low ribs in. Use your next inhale, straighten the legs, reach your arms up. As you exhale, it's forward folding. Inhale, halfway up, get length. With your exhale, step your right foot back, lower the knee gently to the mat, and then this time inhale, we'll lift the chest and lift the arms overhead. Anjana Yasana, low lunge. So sink your hips down and forward, but if you have something going on in your low back, you can always shift your weight back just a little bit so your weight is more stacked upon your back knee and it gives you some space right here in your low back. Otherwise, if you're sinking deeper into your low lunge, we'll stay here. And then we'll all bring the hands behind the head. Again, elbows fan, fan out wide to the side. Use your next exhale to point the elbows in towards each other as you now tuck the chin to the throat and now round in. And then feel like you're trying to pull the base of the skull away from the tops of your shoulders. With your next inhale, go ahead and fan the elbows out wide, finding more of that back bend shape as now your shoulder blades squeeze to the midline. Exhale again, let's round in and inhale and open it up. Exhale, let's round in. Inhale and open it up. Pause right there, reach your arms overhead. This time bend your right elbow above you, left hand for the elbow, and then wrap your fingertips firmly around the skin and the tissues of that right arm bone. And almost feel like you're pulling the skin and the tissues upward to get more of that lengthening on your right side. Then use your exhale to gently tip to the left. Press your head against your right arm so your chin is away from the throat a bit. Take another breath. Inhale, bring both arms up overhead. Maybe connect the palms, gazing up. Exhale, lower both hands down, frame your left foot. Inhale, step back to plank pose or maybe hover the leg for one leg plank. Rock your way forward and exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward face. Exhale, downward face. Now inhale, lift your right leg up high in the air. As you exhale, hug your knee to the chest. We'll step the foot forward to the top, back knee down. Release your toes, low lunge, Anjaneyasana. Inhale, circle the arms up overhead. And once you're here, let your pelvis sink down and forward. Otherwise, we're shifting weight back for that clearance into the low back. Then take your hands behind your head once again, elbows out wide to the side. Using your exhale, curling it inward. So you can draw your elbows towards each other and then the arms, or the elbows rather, just inside your right inner knee. Inhale, we lift out of the low back as we fan the elbows out wide and squeeze the blades. And then moving with our breath, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, holding here. Reach your arms up overhead. Let's bend the left elbow this time. Ardha Gomukhasana. Wrap the fingertips around that left elbow and through the skin and the tissues that we lift up to now exhale, side stretch up and over towards your right. Let's use a nice breath in, come back to center, reach for your arms up, maybe seeing the palms connect as you lift out of your lower back. Exhale, lower both hands down, frame up your right foot. Inhale, step forward to the very top. Exhale, forward fold in. Toes connect, bend your knees. Inhale, Ukatasana, back to our chair pose. Heavy through the hips, weight to the heels, belly firmed in. This time as you exhale, let's add a twist to your right. So snuggle your left elbow outside of your knee and thigh, both hands together in prayer. 
Then feel here that you're stacking elbow over elbow. Squeeze the heel of the hands towards the back of your space as you let your extension of the spine move away from the pelvis at the same time rotating. So it helps to actually gaze up if it's okay on the neck to help a little bit more of that twist. Use your inhale, unravel back to Ukatasana. Exhale, find your twist the other direction. Right elbow outside the leg, palms together in prayer. Stack up the elbows as you push the heel of the hands towards the back of the room. Front of the knees align, hips are still heavy, weight to the heels. Inhale, unravel. Exhale, forward folding. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, this time left foot will step back. Lower that knee gently to the mat. Inhale, low lunge, reach your arms up overhead once again. Palms face forward, lock at the thumbs. This time as you exhale, bend at your elbows, let them come out wide to the sides as you take the thumbs at the crown of the head or maybe just slightly behind your head. Inhale, extend the arms back up. Feel like you're really pulling the thumbs apart. Exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale. Exhale, like you're trying to pull your elbows apart or rather your thumbs apart. Inhale, bring it back up. Exhale, this time side stretch up and over to your right. Now notice your right leg. That guy wants to kind of waver around a little bit. So make sure that you traction the knee forward in the direction of your second toe. Inhale through the center. Exhale, release both arms, framing up your right foot. Inhale, step back to plank or hover that leg in a one leg plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, both feet touch down. Exhale, downward facing dog, hips high in the air. Inhale, lift the left leg up high. Exhale, hug your knee to the chest, we'll step forward to the top. Right knee comes down. Inhale, low lunge. Once again, reach those arms up overhead. Palms forward, lock at your thumbs. Use your exhale. Again, like you're trying to pull the thumbs apart, bending at the elbows, thumbs above the crown of the head or slightly behind. Inhale, extend the arms back up. Exhale, pull it down. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, extend the arms up, keep the same grip. Exhale, lean a little over to the left. Again, making sure that you're lifting out of the lower back, still tractioning the left knee forward. Inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, let's lower both hands down to the mat. Frame your left foot and we inhale, step forward to the top. And exhale, forward fold in. Inhale, Ukatasana, bend through the knees, reach your arms up. Exhale, Samastitihi hands right alongside your body. Inhale, circle the arms out and up. Exhale, dive in, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Either vinyasa back or simply step back, downward facing dog. Always know you can add on. Always know you can take away. So settle into a downward dog here for a moment. Catch your breath. I know I do. Right? Really tough to cue and do the practice at the same time, but I think it's kind of helpful right, for me to practice along with you. I can feel what you're probably feeling or help you to feel something a little bit more. All right, so in our downward facing dog, again, you're going to look forward to your hands. So this time I want you just to lower, or rather, let me take that back. Let's actually to lift the right leg up in the air. We'll start with that. It's a little bit easier. So right leg up in the air. Once again, we're going to bend at the knee and stack the hip. Again, keeping the hips stacked, not the shoulders. So again, as we're square through the shoulders, now look forward. So you can slowly lower just your left elbow and forearm down. Right elbow will bend a little bit, but not splay out to the side. You want to keep, again, working and keeping our shoulders square. So really great strengthening of our upper back. Again, that bottom leg, if you have tight hamstrings, the heels lifted, there's a little bend in the knees. Both knees are slightly bent if you're in that version, right? Hold another breath. Use your next inhale, lift the left elbow, straighten your right leg, square the hips. Exhale, hug your knee to the chest and let's step forward to the very top of our space. Runner's lunge to high lunge. All right, so right knee is stacked over the right heel. Back heel is lifted up high and maybe there's a little bend in that back knee. So you're creating more of that neutral pelvis where you're zipping the belly up and the tailbone downward. A lot of times, sometimes I see a lot of this, right? So there's all this 
over curving in our low back and dumps everything down. So if you create more of that neutral pelvis and work on firming the belly, right, you get that strong foundation and that upper body is lifted, right? So when you feel ready, arms overhead, shoulders away from the ears, belly firm dead. Now with your next inhale, we're gonna straighten the front knee out without locking out through the knee. Instead, feel your inner thighs squeeze towards each other. Again, find that neutral pelvic bowl by zipping the belly up a little bit. With an exhale, we're gonna bend into the front knee, take your hands behind the head and add a twist to turn to the right. Then on your inhale, face forward, reach your arms up, straighten your right knee. Exhale, bend the knee, turn and twist to your right. One more, inhale. And exhale. Now hold here, elbows out wide, shoulders away from the ears. Release your arms on an inhale. Exhale, reverse this. Slide your right hand for the back of your left leg. Left arm up in the air. Breathe. Use your next exhale. Find warrior two to the other side. So line up your feet. <clears throat> Right heel will bisect the left arch. And in fact, turn your heel out slightly. So it helps to encourage this internal rotation of your back hip. Then your right hip, your front leg, there's an external rotation. Like the inseam of your pant is rolling towards the pinky toe side of your foot. Then stack your upper body over your hips, extending out long within your arms. Shoulders down and away from your ears. And then find your breath. Feel here like you're trying to squeeze your mat towards the midline. So you're really firming it more into your inner thighs. All right, let's use an inhale, reverse warrior. Reach your right arm up and back, leaning back. And this version, I want you to go ahead and look towards your back foot. <clears throat> now bend your top arm and place your fingertips right at the front of your inner shoulder. So right at the shoulder head, right? And then we're gonna simply just circle out or create a circle with our elbow. Doesn't matter which direction you move first. And then just switch the direction. You can always increase the shape of that circle depending on how you feel in your shoulder. Reverse the warrior inhale, reach the arm up and alongside your ear. Exhale back for warrior two. Now inhale, straighten your front knee out, just get a little clearance of the hip to begin. And then exhale back for your warrior two stance. <clears throat> So now with your right hand, your front hand, turn your thumb down so you're creating internal rotation at that front shoulder. Then bring your arm behind the back, not for a full bind. In fact, slide your hand so it's more right behind the right side of your hip, right? So just a little bit like this chicken arm. Then bring your left hand to your hip for just a moment. From here, I want you to tip your torso forward on a diagonal and then now hook your right elbow inside your right inner leg. And right away, you can be like, oh my God, you'll feel it in the shoulder. So you can either stay here if it's okay on your arm and your shoulder. If it's too intense, stay this way, maybe rest the arm on top of the leg. If that's still too intense, simply come into the modified version of Parjvakanasana, right? Then once you've got your arms set up that works best for you, keep your chest lifted. Tuck your right sit bone underneath you. Stay anchored through the back foot. Top arm maybe will reach up and alongside the ear. Turn the hand so the pinky looks downward. So now the eye of your elbow is looking towards either your forehead or the top of your head. Firm the belly in and up. Continue breathing deeply here. I know it's intense. Next inhale, reverse your triangle. Reversing the trikonasana, release your right arm, reach it up in the air, making sure it still works. And then exhale, we'll windmill both hands downward to the mat, frame your right foot, step back, vinyasa, or maybe to downward dog. If you're moving to vinyasa, lower chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. All right. All right, moving to our other side. Inhale, start with your left leg lifting up and back, three leg dog. Exhale, bend at the knees, stack the hips, not the shoulders. Then look forward to your hands. Once again, without just plopping it down, really work on 
slowly lowering your right forearm and elbow down. A little bend in the left elbow helps and then square off the shoulders. Let your head and neck be released and relaxed. Hips are stacked, knees to the sky, right heels heavy towards the ground. Beautiful. Inhale, let's straighten it back up to the three leg dog. Lift your right elbow, straighten your left leg. Exhale, hug your knee to the chest. We'll step forward, runner's lunge. High lunge. Once again, just setting it up. All right. So again, you wanna make sure you've got that neutral pelvic bowl where the belly is lifted. A little tuck of the tail if that means you have to bend the back knee a little bit. Then let the upper body peel up and away from that grounding, from the pelvis and down to your legs. With your inhale, slowly straighten the front knee without locking out the kneecap. Instead, squeeze the inner thighs towards each other as you lift your belly towards your heart. Exhale, bend the knee, hands behind the head and add a twist to the left. Inhale, straighten the front knee, arms reach up. Hands behind the head, exhale, twist left. Inhale and exhale, twist left, we hold. Elbows out wide to the side, rotate from the rib cage towards your chest, then release your arms out wide, exhale, reverse your shape. Right hand finds the back of your left leg, left hand finds the back of your right leg, right arm up and back. Exhale, warrior two, other side. Gonna adjust your stance, heel to arch, slight kick of the heel out to encourage the internal rotation of your right hip, external rotation of your left hip. Right? Knee over the heel as much as you can as you get heavy through the hips, stacking your upper body over the hips, arms reaching out long. Right? So you want to feel that opening of the chest, but everything's still feeling the hugging in, right? even though you're extending out your arms and your legs. Squeeze the heels towards each other, plug the heads of the arm bones in. Inhale, reverse warrior. Reach your left arm up and back. Gaze to your back foot. Bend your top arm. Again, you're placing your fingertips right at the front of the head, left shoulder head. Then again, we're gonna create the little circles or bigger circles. Again, it's depending on what you feel on this little shoulder. Reverse it. Inhale, reverse warrior. Once again, extending the arm, leaning back. Exhale, warrior two. We'll straighten the front knee out. Again, get a little clearance of the hip. Matt wants to move around a little here, so really working on the inner thighs, trying to keep the mat in place. Now okay, back to warrior two. All right, once in our warrior two, let's take the left hand, turn the thumb down. Again, bring that arm behind you. So rather than that full wrap, slide the hand more towards your left hip, right? The left side of the sacrum. Right hand will cup the right hip as we now tip the torso forward on a diagonal, hooking the left elbow inside that left inner leg. Once you're set, again, notice if it's too much, modify it. Rest the arm on your thigh, release that all together if you need to, right? But once you're set in your variation, right hand on the hip, really work on rotating your left rib cage, so the bottom rib cage upward towards the sky. Then we'll take that top arm up and alongside the ear if that works, right? Turning through the hand, Right, like we're trying to wrap the skin of our outer armpit towards our chin. Keep your back foot firmly anchored and firm as you lift up from your right inner thighs. So you're a little bit more buoyant in your hips. Let's take another breath. Reverse your trigonasana, straighten your left knee out as you lean up and back. Create a little clearance at the hip, releasing the left arm. And then exhale, we take both hands down, frame up your left foot, step back, your exit of choice. Make it simple, make it challenging, make it fun. Exhale, downward facing dog. All right, from here, inhale, look forward, slide to plank pose, and then lower your knees, your chest, your chin downward to the space. And then bring your forearms out in front of you. We'll take a moment of rest in crocodile pose. So rest your forehead on top of your top arm. Feel heavy against your mat. And just practice the deep breath again, all right? Okay, from here, since we're down on our bellies, we actually 
use our block for the next um, few postures here. So using a block, I mean, if you don't have a block at home, maybe a good hardcover book. Um, but with our block, we'll place the block onto, uh, right in front of us onto the floor at the lowest level. So now you have all these different heights, but at the lowest level. Extend both arms straight and then palm your block. So rather than gripping it with your fingers, instead free up your fingers and really push the heel of your hands, the metatarsals of your hands against the block and let your elbows straighten out, right? So once you start to grip, your elbows will start to bend and it doesn't really work on what you want to work up here in our upper back. So we're palming the block, fingers are free, arms extend into forward, and then we're going to plug the shoulder heads into the shoulder side. Pockets. Now I want you to rest your forehead down against your mat, but I'm going to keep my head lifted so you can hear me talk to you. So we've got our upper arm, our arms ready and are holding the block, but let's adjust the lower half of the body. So extend out long within your legs and then press the tops of your feet against your mat. Even feel like you can get all five, 10 fingernails to press down, oh, fingernails, toenails to press down. And as you're pushing against the tops of your feet and the toes, see that your knee caps will now lift off the mat as you're now engaged through your legs, quads are working. And in fact, you'll feel your glutes working here, but try not to over clench the glutes. Right? It might start to strain your low back. So glutes work, quads are working, tops of the feet against your mat. Again, your forehead is down. Now from here, we're going to keep the tops of the feet and uh, onto the mat and the forehead. Use your next inhale to now lift the block, lift your arms. Just the arms, just the block. Again, your forehead's on the ground, the tops of the feet are pressing, we're active through the legs. We're palming the block like we're trying to squeeze the block inward. And we're holding here for another five, four, three, two, and one, release. From here, turn one cheek to the mat. Just take a little reprieve, a little rest. You can let the legs go. And then once again, bring your forehead downward towards your mat. Activate your arms, straighten the elbows, palm the black block, free up your fingers. Activate your legs, press through the tops of the feet, kneecaps off the ground, quads are working, glutes are engaged, keeping the forehead down, the tops of the feet down. Inhale, lift your arms, lift the blocks. So you can lift your biceps in line with your ears or maybe even past your ears. Again, just be mindful what you feel. Hold another five, four, three, two, and one release. Rest the opposite cheek to the mat here. Again, let everything feel heavy. Your arms, your torso, your glutes, your legs. Now from here, take your block and place your block and rest it on your glutes. So if you've taken my classes back home in the Chicago suburbs, I've done this many times, and it's never a fan favorite, and you'll, you'll see why in a moment. So <clears throat> the block is on our glutes. We're going to reach back, right? And again, we're palming the block. As much as you want to use your fingertips to hold that block, again, really spread your fingers and then palm it, right? And bend at your elbows like I have. That will really help. Notice the fronts of the shoulders want to droop downward, so, so you can actually feel the shoulder heads draw back inner shoulder, outer shoulder, collarbones wide, forehead is down, activate your legs, pressing down through the tops of your feet. Everything stays lowered. We're only lifting the block off our glutes now on an inhale, lift it, hold, five, four, three, two, and one, release. Take one cheek to the mat and you'll know why. It's not a fan favorite. Oh, that's tough. We'll try it just one more time. And you're lucky because I like things in three, so we're just doing it twice. So again, reach back, palm the block, free your fingers, forehead down to the ground, tops of the feet rooted. Next inhale, lift the block off your glutes, squeeze the block inward, shoulders away from the ears. Hold another five, four, three, two, and one release. Oh, opposite cheeks of the mat. Let it go, wiggle around through your hips. I set the block to the side. <clears throat> All right, from here, plant your hands underneath the heads of your shoulders, curl the toes under, knees off the ground, firm up the quads, push your mat away on an inhale for plank. Exhale, downward facing dog, nice. From 
your downward facing dog legs inhale lift your right leg up high in the air keeping your hips square exhale hug your knee in towards your chest curl out and round inhale extend your leg back and up exhale step the foot forward to the very top high lunge once again inhale peel the chest up lift the front rim of the pelvis up maybe a slight bend in your back knee inhale straighten your front knee out exhale bend the knee hands behind the head twist right this time hold the twist elbow spread spread rather spread out wide on your next inhale tip your torso forward leading with the left elbow your chest is still looking to the right let your upper body peel away from your pelvis back leg strong lift the thigh bone up stay right here if you'd like very challenging or come into a prayer twist left elbow outside of your right knee and thigh palms and prayer line up the elbows stack the forearms squeeze the heel of the hands towards your right hip lengthen away from your thumbs hold another three two one warrior two or rather high lunge once again from your high lunge, bring your arms out wide like airplane arms. Turn your thumbs down and bring your arms behind you. Maybe you'll reverse your prayer or you'll come into fist to fist, right? And come in so the arms are behind the back. Squeeze your front ribs to your back ribs. Keep your collarbones wide. From here, as you inhale, tip forward. Exhale, warrior three. So pick up your back leg. Once, you're, whew, once you lift your back leg up, point all five toes of your back foot down. Lift the elbows to the sky, so it helps you to widen out your collarbones. I have a soft bend in my right knee, just so I'm not hyperextending through the knee, I'm really working on squeezing through my quads. Beautiful. Use your exhale, step back. Warrior two, release your arms. Again, heel to arch. Flip your right palm, reverse, inhale. Reach your right arm up and back. <clears throat> this time, bend your right elbow. Place your right hand to the nape of the neck or to your shoulder blades. Left hand to the elbow to stay here if you have tight shoulders for Ardha Gomukhasana or full Gomukhasana. Take your left arm to the side, turn your thumb down and bring your arm behind your back. Walk the fingertips up. Maybe you'll find your right fingertips or simply hold the back of your shirt. Once you've got your variation, I want you to take your hips and just go bump them to the right a little bit. And then as you lean back, give you a little bit more clearance in your low back that way. <clears throat> Anchor down against the bottom of your front foot without hyperextending the knee. So a little soft bend into the knee. Then stay with the arms if you can for now an unsupported trikonasana. So once you start to tip your torso forward, take that deep crease of your right hip and aim it towards your left inner thigh. I'm shifting my gaze upward so it helps to keep my chest lifted. Soft bend in the front knee, reaching the heart away from the belly hold then keep your left arm behind the back bring your right hand down to rest against your shin maybe if you want place it upon a block then that left arm behind the back now comes into a full bind and you'll see my fingertips around I can if you can reach all the way around maybe you'll dig your fingertips against that right hip crease letting it be a little tool to actually help that right hip kind of pull away from your right armpit so you're a little longer into the right rib cage a bit you know you can always adjust the height of the block or maybe even your hand is against the floor the chest is still lifted from here keep your left arm still behind your back look down or to your right towards your right foot half moon Ardha Chandrasana bend your right knee walk your right hand out diagonally about 12 inches to your pinky toe I have a block on my hand so I'll show you how to use that block hand on the block as you shift and now lift still got my right left arm rather behind the back my fingertips are still pushing against that hip crease notice here if you tend to hyperextend your front knee keep a soft bend in your knee as you really work on engaging your glutes and your quads the help stabilize your hips once you feel stable strong maybe that left arm will reach up from here chapasana half bow Turn your left thumb down so you find that rotation at the shoulder head again. Bend your left knee, catch the front of your ankle or the top of your foot, then actively push the foot against your palm so it opens up not just your quad, the front of the hip, but even through that left shoulder. Feel free to gaze down, maybe up past your left shoulder. One more breath. Inhale, release for your half moon. 
Gaze downward to the mat if you're not already. Square the chest, square the hips as you step your left foot over your right foot at the top for a cross-legged forward fold. Once you're here, again, hands on blocks if you want. Otherwise, hands to the mat. A little bend in both knees. And then walk both hands a little to the left as you press your hips more to the right. Let your head and neck relax. You should feel a nice little release into your right outer hip. Nice. We'll use an inhale. Bring both hands back in front of the feet. This time we're going to play with a little bit crow pose. In this version, it's going to play at the crossed ankle crow pose, not a crossed knee. So I'm going to step back a little bit so I have some space in front of me. I still have my left foot over the right foot. I'm going to come onto the balls of my feet, letting the knees come out wide. So I'm still crossed at the ankles. Just like crow pose, bakasana, placing both hands down, shoulder distance, fingers really wide. As I bend my elbows, I'll slide my shins against my upper arms, looking forward, and then lifting the feet off the ground, so keeping the ankles crossed, right? Heels up towards your sit bones, round against your upper back as you're pushing against your mat, gazing forward, hold as long as you can. And then as you shoot your legs back or step back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. All right, take a moment here in your downward dog. If you need rest, child's pose. Connect with your breath. Let's try our left side now. Inhale, lift your left leg back and up. Hips are square. Exhale, knee to nose, shift your weight forward, round your spine. Inhale, extend your leg back and up. Exhale, step the foot forward to the very top. Set your legs up, high lunge. Inhale, lift the chest, lift the arms up. Again, lift the belly up towards your heart, so you're lifting the front rim of the pelvis up. Next, inhale, straighten the front knee out. Exhale, bend the elbows, fingertips behind the head as you turn and twist. One more inhale, straighten the front knee, arms overhead. Hands behind the head, bend the knee, turn and twist, hold. Once you're set here, keep everything the same. Just inhale, tip your torso forward, leading with your right elbow. Press your back leg a little straighter as you lift a little bit out of your hips, either staying here or now adding your prayer twist, right arm outside the leg. Press the heel of the hands towards the back of the room. Stack up your arms. Back leg strong, lifting up from your inner thigh. Another breath. Unravel, warrior two. And set up your feet, heel to arch. Extend through the arms. Reverse Trikonasana, straighten your left leg. Reach your left arm up and back. Bend your left elbow, right hand for the elbow, either remaining here, again, if you have tight shoulders, or adding full gomukhasana, right arm to the side. Turn your thumb down. Walk that arm behind your back, fingertips up towards the nape of the neck, or maybe you'll find your grip. For me, I'm just going to press here. I've got tight shoulders on this side. So once you're set, again, do that little bump of the hips, left hip forward and up. Give you a little bit more space to open up in your back, low back rather. Keep your arm variation. Start to tip forward for Trikonasana, unsupported version. So as you lead with that left elbow, kick your hips back, right? Find that deep crease at that left hip, a soft bend on the front knee. Again, maybe the gaze will help you keep your chest lifted rather than you drooping down. Then from here, release your left hand down to your shin, maybe to the mat or a block. That right arm now becomes a half bind. Maybe just pressing your forearm against your low back, or if your fingertips can find your left hip crease, go ahead and dig the fingertips against the hip crease and press it towards your right inner thigh as you find more lengthening away from your pelvis and your upper body. Beautiful. Keep the bind you have. Look down for half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Bend your right knee. Take the block with you or not as you shift and now lift, stacking your hips. It's basically a, a floating triangle pose, or in this version, a half bound triangle pose. Again, our legs are strong without locking out our knees. Instead, engage your quads and engage your glutes to stabilize your hips. Reach that top arm up in the air, find it stacking a wrist over wrist. 
either stay or chapasana, bend the knee, reach back, catch a hold of the foot or the ankle, kick the foot against your hand, open up through your chest as you nudge your pelvis forward a little bit. All right, opening up into your hips, into that right shoulder. Inhale, release your arm and your leg. Look down so you can square off the upper body. Then the hips, so we can cross your right foot over the left foot at the top. Cross-legged forward fold, hands on blocks or not. This time, walk your hands a bit to your right. Press your hips more to the left and let your head and neck relax. Now you're getting that nice big release into that left side. Down the left IT band, maybe even feeling in your lower back. Then inhale, pivot forward. Once again, let's keep these ankles crossed. And then maybe this time you'll add Bakasana to tripod headstand. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit more space. So right foot over the left foot, come on to the balls of your feet, knees out wide, set your hands down for your crow pose, shoulder distance apart, hug your upper arms in, look forward, shins against your upper arms, start to shift your weight, lift both feet off the mat, still crossed at the ankles. You're moving to tripod headstand, tuck your chin in towards your throat center, lower the crown of the head down. See that your elbows and your wrists are aligned as you slowly lift both legs up, keeping the ankles still crossed. Then switch up the cross, squeeze in through the inner legs. Then unravel the legs. From here, peck at your hips. See your toes. Pull the belly in. We'll look forward as we shoot the legs back. Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward dog. Nicely done, yogis. All right, from here, let's take a child's pose. Lower the knees, hips to the heels, and let's give the arms a little break. Wrap your arms just outside your legs. Your hands are by your feet. Tuck your chin inward towards your knees as you rest your forehead to the ground. And just breathe. All right. I'm going to stay here, but bring your arms forward once again. <clears throat> and then set yourself up like a tabletop position. Shoulders over the wrists. Separate the knees and stack them underneath your hips. I'm going to keep the lower half of the body the same where the hips are still over the knees for puppy pose, Anahatasana. So extend your arms forward. Take your arms maybe as wide as your mat. Be good on the shoulders, right? And then for some of us, maybe the forehead will touch the nose, the chin, or maybe now we're more open in our shoulders and upper back, the chest might touch. No, you can always take your block and even rest your forehead on the block. But keep your hips still over both knees and the belly is strong and pulled in so you're not dumping so much weight against your lower back. The last couple breaths, maybe change the direction of your hands, turn the palms to face up, so just slight external rotation at the shoulders. Then from here, take your forehead to the mat. We're going to bend at the elbows and take prayer hands at the nape of the neck. So palms in prayer. And then walk your elbows forward, right? Forward, forward, forward. So they move away from your hip creases. And then feel heavy through the upper arms and through your chest. Get that nice stretch into your triceps and through the sides of your body. Then go ahead and release that. Extend your arms forward. Lift your head. And then just slide your torso down onto your mat. Let's give your hips a little wiggle. All right. So from here... Take your whole body and shift it over towards the right edge of your mat just a bit. And then extend your left arm forward onto the wood floor, onto the floor. We're gonna lean to our left side here. I'm gonna take my mic and just kind of bring it out here so I just don't crush it. So you're leaning on your left side. I've got my head against my left bicep. <coughs> Reach your right arm up in the air and turn your thumb down. So again, you're finding that rotation inwardly at the shoulder. Then bring that arm behind the back, just like Gomukhasana, but without using your arms here, uh, your left arm rather, so you can actually start to wiggle your right hand towards your shoulder blades or towards the nape of your neck. Now from here, 
bend your right knee, set the foot to the mat, and we're gonna slowly roll onto our backs. Now once you're on your back, if it's too intense, slide your hand a little closer towards your low back. If you want a little bit more, slide your hand a little upward towards your shoulder blades or the neck. And then we'll maybe bend both knees if that feels all right. Now once you're here, what happens in this particular pose, you'll see that there's a big arching in through the low back. So draw your low belly in and down as you reach out just a little bit through your tailbone. So you're finding some, a bit of grounding in through the low back. So you're not dumping weight or hurting your low back in this position. This might feel just enough. You're feeling right here into this right shoulder. If you want a little bit more, keep the knees bent, but drop your knees more to the right. Left arm does nothing. Maybe even look to the left if you'd like. And just breathe. Let's just take one more breath. And then slowly coming out of the pose, lift the knees back to center. Straighten your left leg out. Slowly lean to your left side. Again, let your left arm reach. So you got that pillow for the arm. And then release your right arm slowly and give it a little shake. All right. All right. So let's try our other side. So go ahead and just simply roll all the way over towards your right side, coming a little bit to the edge of the mouth. So once you roll over, you're still on your space. And take your right arm out so you've got it as a little pillow as you're stacking up your upper body and your hips. Reach your left arm up in the air, turn the thumb down, bring your arm behind your back. Once again, kind of moving the fingertips up, just depending again on your, the opening of your chest, or rather your shoulders. Always be mindful if you feel tightness or it's painful, right? Back off a bit. Then once you've got that arm set, bend your left knee, set the foot flat to the mat so you can slowly guide yourself onto your back. So the palm is touching your mat, back of the hand against your spine. And again, once you're set, Determine where, determine where you want to place that arm, higher, lower. Bend your left knee, bend your right knee if that's okay, staying here. Or if you want more, drop your knees to the left. Maybe gaze to the right. Again, keeping your core center engaged. Right, so you're not dumping against the lower back. And then we'll slowly come out of the pose. Start with the legs, point the knees up. Straighten your right leg first. So you can roll to your right side, rest onto the right arm, and very slowly release your left arm. Give it a little shake. Ugh. All right, and then from here, we're gonna stay on our backs. So just ro simply roll onto your mat. <clears throat> and then we're gonna just kind of counter that, that shoulder stretch here. So doing eagle on our backs. So just cross your right leg over your left leg. Either let the foot rest by your calf or wrap the toes all the way around. And then left arm over the right arm. So eagle pose, just a lot easier because it's on our back. But really, I want you to feel how you can stretch a little bit through the upper back. So take your eagle arms, press your elbows, your wrists upward towards the sky. So you actually feel now your shoulder blades spread away from the midline. And in fact, they're probably lifted off your mat. Now we're just adding the legs for a little extra measure. It's nice for the hips. But really work on engaging your inner thighs. Like your right knee is squeezing to your right and your left knee is squeezing to your left. Hold this, pushing the arm bones to the sky, squeezing through the inner leg line. Another three, two, and one. Slowly unravel. From here, go ahead and just set both feet flat to the mat. Walk your feet out as wide as your mat and just simply windshield wiper your legs side to side. All right. Coming back through center, walk the feet back in. This time, let's cross the right knee over the left knee. Oh, I'm sorry, other way, left knee over the right knee. Either keep the foot just outside the calf or wrap it all the way around. And then with the arms, it'll be the right arm over the left. Again, eagle on your back. Press your elbows, your wrists towards the sky. Let your shoulder blades peel away from the mat, firm up through the belly. Squeeze in through your inner thighs, feeling here like your left knee squeezing left, your right knee squeezing right. 
hold another three, two, and one, unravel, slowly release. Bring both arms out wide to the side, feet as wide as the mat, knees to the sky. Again, gently windshield wiper your legs side to side. All right, so for time's sake, you can always come back here and add a back bend of your choice. In fact, since we really opened up in our upper back bridge pose or Urva Dhanurasana, upward facing bow are great ways to kind of add to this. I'm just gonna skip right past that and you can feel free to maybe pause here and add your back bends and then just play again and you can meet me right back here. I'm gonna just release a little bit into our hips. So when you're ready to release the lower half of the body, pull your knees in. Let's cross the right leg over the left leg, but this time let's either place the hands against the shins or we'll reach for the ankles. Or if you can manage it, reach for the pinky sides of your feet. Now, if you're holding your feet, make sure that your feet are flexed so you're not sickled at the ankles. Now you can always start to pull the heels just outside of your hips. That might be a nice good stretch for your hips. Or try this. Lift the feet up so you can see like your shins are in line with each other and then push your feet in op opposite directions here. Relax your upper body and your shoulders and that should feel a different stretch into your hips here. And then make sure you can feel a firm rooting of your sacrum as you reach out from the base of the spine. Make sure you're not adding extra tension in your shoulders, your neck, your jaw, your face. Just breathe. So keep the knees still crossed, but release your feet, fan the arms out wide to the side. Step your left foot first to the mat and scoot your hips to the right. And we're gonna lower the knees to the left. Either keep your head neutral, your chin, just gaze, or you're rather you're gazing up, or maybe turn your chin to the right. So now you're adding a twist, or rather um, getting that release into your neck as well. Inhale, come back to the center. Unravel your legs and just simply switch up. Left knee over the right knee, Gomukhasana. Hold your shins, the ankles, or the pinky sides of the feet. Again, keeping our feet flexed so we're not sickled at the ankles. You just want to protect those ligaments around the ankles. Again, heels towards your outer hips or lift the feet. Again, shins more parallel or in line with each other rather, or parallel over the mat. Keep your feet flexed. Almost feel like you're pushing your feet outwards. Squeeze your inner thighs. Reach out through the base of the spine to ground your sacrum. Keep your upper body fairly relaxed, even though we're using our arms. Last breath here. And then from here, go ahead and release your feet, still keeping the knees crossed. Step your right foot down to help scoot your hips to the left edge of your mat. And we'll drop both knees over to the right. Again, either keep your head neutral or turn your chin all the way to the left. Feel heavy and weighted through your legs and really work on keeping both shoulder blades firmly rooted down against your space. Now use your next inhale to bring the legs to center. Exhale, unravel your legs, hug your knees against your chest, tuck your chin in towards your throat center as you lift your head. And slide your hands underneath your knee creases, rock up to seated, and now pivot around to face you. We will come into Baddha Konasana. So soles of the feet together, knees out wide to the sides. And in fact, though, let's come into Tadasana to get a little release in our, our low back. So same shape, but just slide your feet forward. And you'll thread each arm underneath your calves. You can either keep your palms flat against your mat or even cup them over the tops of your feet. I like to place my hands flat because I push the heel of my hands against the mat and drag them back as I move my chest forward. See if that works good for you too. So then now as I'm reaching forward, leading with the sternum, now I'll use my exhale to slowly fold inward. Then go ahead and inhale, look forward. Exhale, slowly unravel out of the pose. From here, let's tuck your right heel into your, into your um, groin. Take your left leg out on a slight diagonal. 
right? So, Pavrita Janu Shursasana. From here, let's rest the left arm on the inside of the leg with your palm facing upward, and you can either place your hand to the arch of your foot if you can reach that. Otherwise, let it just rest inside the leg. Inhale, reach your right arm up in the air. Then turn your thumb down, bring the arm behind your back. Once again, finding that bind of sorts, and then let your left ear drop toward your left knee, and then really heavy through the head. You can stay here, a really nice stretch, nice passive stretch. Otherwise, we'll take that bound arm, reach it back up towards the sky, and then extend it alongside your ear. And if you can manage to reach for your toes, grab a hold of the toes, maybe the left hand will reach for the arch of your foot, and then let the elbows splay out wide as if it's kind of like a, a bear trap for your chest and your head to poke through. Then notice your right sit bone. That guy wants to lift off your mat, so keep it firmly rooted. Take one more breath. Use your next inhale to slowly rise out of the pose. Exhale to release, switch sides. Left heel to the groin, right leg out to the side on a diagonal. Rest your right arm inside the leg, palm up, or reach for the arch of the foot. Let's go ahead and extend that left arm straight up in the air. Thumb down, internally rotate at the shoulder. Bring your arm behind the back for a bind and let the head release. Nice passive stretch here to begin. So let your chest feel lifted, like your right rib cage is trying to look up towards the sky. Either stay, because it feels good. Otherwise, go ahead and reach that left arm back up and extend it alongside your ear for a side stretch. Either staying here or going deeper. Find your toes, maybe right hand for the arch of the foot. Elbows move away from each other like a bear trap. Ground firmly against your left thigh, your left sit bone. And then inhale, slowly come out of the pose. Exhale to release. Let's find a seated position, either crossed at the shins or maybe sitting on the shins in Vajrasana. And we'll just close our practice with a few rounds of Nadi Shodhana before we take rest. Okay. So with your left hand, just let your left hand rest upon your knee, palm down, or if you'd like, you can turn the palm forward and connect Yana Mudra, your thumb against the index, uh, your thumb against your index finger, can, signifying the connection of your universe to your soul. And in your right hand, you'll tuck your index finger and your middle finger in. So all that's left are your pinky, your ring finger, and your thumb. But then the ring finger and the thumb, we'll use that to help alternately move our breath, right? So it's going to pinch off at the bridge of the nose rather than at the nostrils, right, at the opening. So as we just hover the fingers at the bridge of the nose, nice and tall. Notice here, because we're using your right arm, our head wants to even turn to the right. So you can center everything. And then just take a moment, closing your eyes down, tall in the spine, feel your breath. Let's take one cleansing breath together. So take a deep inhale through the nose and then exhale out of your mouth. Close your right nostril, inhale left for three, two, one. Close the left, open the right, exhale six, five, four, Three, two, one. Inhale right. Three, two, one. Close the right. Exhale left. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale left. Three, two, one. Close the left. Exhale right. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale right. Three, two, one. Close the right. Exhale left for six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale left. Close. Exhale right. Inhale right. Close. Exhale left. Inhale left, close, exhale right, inhale right, close, exhale left. Keep your eyes closed as you rest your right hand on your knee. 
maybe connecting yana mudra thumb against the index finger and then just sit on your spine with the eyes closed and just simply notice take away any formal movement of the breath just breathe naturally aware of what your body feels any energetic shift any change without judging it without overthinking it then either remain seated to close your practice or maybe take a few moments to rest on your back in shavasana If you come down onto your back, let your legs come out wide, arms alongside you, palms up. And just let your body release. Once you're here, you can go ahead and maybe it'd be easy for you just to pause this video and take as long as you need in Shavasana. And then whenever you feel ready to come out, just start to move a little bit through your fingers and your toes. You can bring the legs together, point out through the toes as you now bring the arms overhead and reach out through your fingers, extending and opening up. And then hug both knees close against your chest. Squeeze your thighs firmly against your belly. Go ahead and roll over towards the right side of your body using that right arm as your pillow. Pausing in your fetal position here. This symbolizing the idea of rebirth. And then press yourself up. We'll face forward, coming into our seated position of choice. Eyes still closed as our hands meet together in prayer in Anjali Mudra. Fully thankful, grateful for our body's ability to breathe and move today along our mat. And grateful always for this practice of yoga. Through the many challenges that it places in our bodies and our minds. Allowing us to continue to evolve and grow as we're on our journeys on and off our mats. Go ahead and bring your thumbs up towards your third eye center. We'll bow in to seal our practice. Namaste.